What is up, y'all? It's the next day. Amazing how that happens on YouTube, right? So, I was working on my car, and the chance to go film a GT3 versus my buddy's Z06 came up. And so, of course you know what I had to do. Uh, if you're new to the channel, obviously we work on cars, you know, as much as I can. I work on the G8. Over here, that's what we're doing. And then, it's all my buddy's cars. This is just my buddy Chad's shop, so. You know, he's got his stuff going on. Uh, got the Cobra here. It made quite a bit on the dyno, um, just for a stock blower. Uh, I wanna say it made like 600, and like 700, just over 600, I think, and then 730 foot-pounds or something crazy like that. It's that Ford stuff, dude, <laughs> all the torque. And then this is a car, um, gotta get you. This is one he's building for his son. Um, him and his son are actually building it, I should say. Colin. And uh, this is gonna be a sweet car. You just don't see them like this anymore. And if you get a chance to buy one, they're super expensive, even in a bucket condition. But this thing is awesome. I mean, the paint is amazing how it came out. Uh, it's Justin's Lightning. That thing's on a big, big Whipple. Um, that's pretty good. Street truck, man. <laughs> but if you guys want to see more of those, we can definitely get some of those on the channel. This will be badass when they get these actually going and running. But uh, yeah, little sidestep to my video. Um, kind of happens. I mean, I'm not going to turn down filming a GT3, you know, at all. So yeah, we're going to get back in the shop. We're going to get this done. We'll kind of go over uh, where I'm at with this. Um, pretty much, I did all the basic stuff. Kind of see here, I took off the exhaust. Um, obviously, you gotta take that heat shield off right there to get to the drive line. So, obviously, took the exhaust off. Really easy to do. Um, then we got to the point where we are now. Um, you take that heat shield off, and then you can take the exhaust off. Um, it's really easy also like when you're taking the drive line out i just undid the back bolts here to the diff and then i loosened the bolts in the center let that drop and that allowed slack in the drive line to actually pull it out of the tranny and pull it out of the rear end so pretty easy another thing you'll have to do you'll have to pull the starter um mine's got uh cooks long tube headers on it. Um, kind of see here, let's see if we can get some even more light. Kind of see up here, this is where you're gonna pull the starter. Kind of see up in there, it's gonna drop out from there. Once I loosen the bolts, I just push the starter up that way and uh, brought it down so I could actually um, take the ground wire off, both the wires here actually, I should say. So you'll take both those off. And uh, kind of look over here, one's a, so the smaller guy right there is a 10, and then the larger one I think was a 13, but I could be wrong. And then, yeah, that's pretty much where we're at. Um, but yeah, pretty easy, easy stuff. I just knocked all the easy stuff out uh, right away. So, made it easier. So now what we gotta do is we gotta get uh, the tranny jack under there. I'm gonna support the transmission, and then, uh, which will allow me to take off. So right here is your uh, transmission brace. I'm gonna take that off while it's supported by the tranny jack, and that'll allow me to bring the transmission down, and it'll give me access to all the top bolts on the transmission. And then uh, when we do that, when we actually drop the transmission down, we'll uh, go ahead and pop the drain bolt and then and allow it to drain most of the fluid out uh, before we take the, the transmission down. And then, um, like I said, those bolts. And then, so you got the uh, transmission cooler lines. They go into the side of the transmission there. You'll take that out. You'll also have to take the linkage off. And uh, I'll have to get rid of this because this is going to, this is for my 
wide bands. It's hooked up there. I'll have to unzip tie that <laughs> so we can uh, drop it down. And then let's see. And then another thing you'll see is you'll see this harness. It'll come down and uh, plug into the tranny here. We'll have to unbolt that so we can pull the tranny out without the harness, obviously. It'll stay with the car. But yeah, super simple. Um, kind of looking forward to that. And then we have, so, let's notice here. So we got the converter here. It already has fluid in it. Um, I didn't want to wait for the AC Delco shit. And so I'm just using a uh, O'Reilly's brand of the synthetic Dextron uh, 6 in this thing. I bought 12 quarts because I'm going to be taking everything out of it. Um, I think if you were doing the Camaro deep pan, you would probably definitely need, I think it's 14 quarts. So I just didn't have time to get the pan and we'll probably do that just for more capacity. So yeah, we're going to get that done. And uh, I'll try to film as much of it for you guys as I can. I've been kind of shitty on my install videos, so I apologize on that. But uh, I'll try to cover everything that you guys need to do. So I'm going to eat some breakfast, and uh, we're going to get at it. All right, so letting the uh, transmission drain, you can kind of see it right here. As soon as I get that done, I'm going to, uh, as soon as I get it torn, the most part where I can get it all done without this tranny jack being in the way. Which I might be able to get this in here. Should be able to. So, there we go. I'll get that done. I'm going to crack the lines on the other side where they come in. And then I've just got to disconnect some of this stuff. Alright, so we got that plug undone. You can see this little lever. You just got to go to rock it. You kind of see how it kind of connects on the on the back up there to the trans. It just goes in there, and then we just got to get that harness, um, get that bolt off, and then pop that plug, and then we'll pull the harness down. We'll get the lines off, and then we'll get the uh, everything else going here. And I'll show you guys here. Um, you can kind of see that's your access point for all your uh, bolts for the converter. You go through there after you pull your starter out. And then the lines go in on this side. You'll take those lines off. All right guys, just so you don't get left in the dark. These are uh, what your bolts are gonna look like uh, that are coming out of the converter. That's those guys right there. They're all 18s. So obviously I'm turning the uh, crank pulley to get access. And then I just get them to where uh, they come to right about there. And then I break them loose um, with basically this half inch and a half inch wobble, 18. If you can get a hold of one of those, that's the best bet. You can get your hand on it. It's going to bend quite a bit. You can break it loose. And then after that, if you've got a ratchet, 3 8 with a wobble, and a short 18, you can just get up in there and spin them out. So, I just wanted to get that in there for you guys because I didn't want to leave you in the dark on that. It's kind of a pain in the ass, but luckily there's only, uh, I think, three of them on the stock one. I'm going to get the rest of these out, and then um, I'm going to drop the ass end of the tranny down so I can get all the bell housing bolts, and uh, we should be able to get it out. All right, so we got both of, uh, we got all the, uh, torque converter bolts out. Obviously, there was only three. And then when this uh, cross member is sitting up in there, you just undo these two 14s. And then the whole, all the other ones, there's four uh, 15s as well that'll be on the outside on both sides. Those are 15s. If you want to see what they look like, that's what they look like. That's those guys, 15s. And then the small little guys come out of the center. They're just uh, nuts. Let's see. Just these guys. So, those are the 
14s. They come off the center, and then the rest are 15s. So we got that. We just gotta make sure we got everything disconnected. I'm gonna lower it down so I can access all the all the uh, bell hosing bolts to get all those. And then I'll get to strap it obviously before I do anything so it doesn't fall off the tranny jack. And uh, yeah, we'll get it down, get everything disconnected, show you guys some uh, update from there. All right, y'all. So I got all the bolts off the uh, bell housing. The one that's on the driver's side, that's like, it's not on the top, but it's like in the middle, like right above the, uh, the alignment pins. That one's kind of a bitch to get to because there's there's not enough space to get to, so you kind of got to get a wobble socket and you got to kind of beat it on so it goes flat because there's no room and it wants to push it off at every time. So it's uh, I just knocked them loose with a, a basic wrench and then I just used something like this. I did use the big half inch gun on everything else, on all the bottom, and I was able to reach everything pretty much with the half inch except for those two that are above each pin on each side because it's just super tight and the socket just doesn't fit in there so i used a 3 8 uh wobble you know impact socket to get those broken loose with the 3 8 drive and then zipped them off with just a little guy that's all you need so let's see if we can get this tranny out of the car without uh dropping it and uh yeah should be fun let's see if i can get it all right <laughs> so it turns out these uh pins like the alignment pins the dowels after a while they seize up I remember reading some stuff about this but uh, basically what you do is you take a 2 by 4 and where the starter goes that big portion that you can see the bell housing I just took a, a 2 by 4 and like a rubber dead blow hit it knocked it loose on uh, the passenger side and then on the driver's side there's a little it was actually hanging down enough to where I could hit the bottom and then I came on the back and just jiggled it, you know, off the pin and finally came off. So we're gonna lower the trans. Make sure there's nothing else connected to it. There's these little like air lines basically. Vacuum lines, I don't know what the hell they are. They're just kind of hung up in here. I'm just gonna leave them attached to the tranny. Pull that down there. Okay. Oh shit. All right. That is no joke. So Basically, kind of show you guys here what was happening. Uh, I'll get the turn one around here. So, we've got, here's the trans when it's pulled out, and then the dowel pins uh, sit right in there. And you can kind of see how they're all rusted. And so basically the transmission was just seized to those dowel pins. And so what I did, you can kind of see the mess. The board's gonna break before anything. There's the two by four, and then I was just using the dead blow right there. And so the first time, obviously you can see this really well. And so I just hit against here until it broke this dowel. And then once it broke this dowel, the transmission kind of rocked down and I could see this bottom part here. And so you can kind of see where it's not dented or anything. It's just got marks from the wood. So that's where I hit and then finally I could see it was coming off and so I went to the back of the transmission and then I was able to actually wiggle it off. So what should have taken me 
I guess what should have taken me, you know, 10 minutes to take the tranny out after I got the, the bolts out, you know, obviously took longer because I had to get the, the dowels to come loose from the transmission. So that's just something you're going to have to uh, look forward to. Maybe it won't happen to you, but like I said, I've read about it before and uh, that's what it is. So we're going to get this uh, converter off. I'm probably going to try to um, drain the rest of the transmission and then... Uh, yeah, clean it all up. I might even go power wash it real quick. And then the converter actually comes with uh, fluid in it. We'll probably put a little bit more in that. Um, we'll get it in the in the tranny. We'll get the, the transmission up and we'll get it stuck in there and uh, back on the pins, tighten down. And then uh, I might even fill the transmission before I put it up there. Might be easier. Just because if you've never seen one of these transmissions, so you can see how, car, how uh, <laughs> dirty the tranny is. This car has 110,000 miles on it. And uh, so if you ever hear about people talking about the fill part or whatever, that's right here. And so you'll just basically, I've always done it from under the car, but you'll get like a, something to pop that pin up there. And then, you just kind of, you can pry up underneath there and pull it out. So I don't want this dirt to go in there, so I'm not going to pull it out right now. But that's where that is. Um, that plug, like I said, it's just a twist off plug. Um, you've got another pin here that holds the harness. This holds the harness. You've got another, um, this wasn't, no, that wasn't anything. And then the other one just kind of pops in here and it holds this harness, which is here. That little plug right there goes in there. That goes on the bolt. This goes into the back of the transmission. And then the only other things you have with the transmission, um, this line isn't used. It's kind of weird. That one isn't used, but that one's used. And then you have um, the vacuum lines, basically. I'm gonna show you guys. So you got this line here. This runs on the on the side of the car, and this part actually runs out on the passenger side. And you'll see it; it'll be on a line, and it just kind of goes back here by the heat shield. And then this guy right here gets stuffed up. It just kind of sits here. So just so you kind of know what what that looks like, um, the actual gear select lever right here. It's actually notched in a square, so you can't really mess that up. You take this nut off, line it back up on there, and uh, it should be good to go. But yeah, this transmission's dirty. Good times. So I got the tranny out, got it all washed off, cleaned off, but I owe my buddy a train pan because, yeah, it was uh, under the lift, under the the tranny jack and I lowered it down and yeah it was under there so I'm gonna go buy him a new one of those so I gotta get this converter out and shut that fucking dog up and yeah see anyways I gotta get this converter out put the new one in like I said dump some uh, fluid in the new converter should have some in it already but fill it up so what you doing with we already made a mess, so we might as well make more of a mess. Just like that, make more mess. <laughs> Let's get this wiped out real quick. I was coming back from the car wash I had this in the back and I didn't have it strapped. Somebody slammed on their brakes in front of me and it slammed into the back of the truck. I was like, son of a bitch. Tranny fluid everywhere. Hopefully it didn't hurt anything. Got that all cleaned out. Go grab the new converter. All right, so here's the new converter. As you can see, there's six spots instead of three. And uh, this is a ZL1. Uh, 
CTSB converter. So, like I said, we've got. If I can get this off, they come with fluid in them, but I'm gonna put. See if it'll take like another quarter. So. Full synthetic. Dextron 6. I'm gonna make more of a mess when I put this one on. I'll clean it up later. Put that on there. Alright, so put it back in the car. Reverse procedure. Alright, y'all, so. I got the training stab back in, pretty uh, self-explanatory. Um, just a little, like once you get it off those dowels the first time, if, you're, if yours does stick, um, when it goes back on, I just I cleaned off the dowels quite a bit, and then the holes where the dowels go into in the transmission, I tried to clean those up quite a bit, and when I stabbed the transmission, um, it did go up on there uh, pretty nice. So, got that all stabbed, um, tightened all the bolts up, and then I uh, tightened all the torque converter bolts up, and uh, I just connected all the wiring and everything else again. So at this point, I put the drive line back in. Um, like I said, it's easier uh, when you put it in to uh, get it in both ends, get it in the, the rear end first, and then get it in the, in the transmission, and then just uh, push the carrier up in the center after you get it on both sides, and then tighten the, the carrier, and it'll be a lot easier for you. Um, other than that, I'll show you where we're at. All right, so as you can see, um, I didn't bolt the exhaust up completely all the way yet. Um, get under here. Got the tranny all in. Um, so basically, I left the drain plug out on the other side. You do have to get the transmission up to about 100 degrees. And work on yours, see if I can get this um, right here on this tag. But that tag right there. As my arm's twigging out. Anyways, tells you what temp on there too. So we've got everything connected. Um, should be good. Got my wide bands put in. Got the exhaust up. Got the drive line in. All tightened up. And uh, yeah, we should be ready to rock. So if you're wondering, that's uh, what's in my car. That's the 345 LSD, 2012 Camaro, diff. We got the BMR lowers and Petters coilovers. Other than that, everything else is stock, stock axles, everything else. So, all right, so I've already got my tune uh, from my buddy at uh, Kaiser Motorsports. He sent it over to me for the converter, so. We're gonna get that flashed into the car, and then um, we gotta get the trans up to temp, make sure it's uh, where it should be for fluid. So once we get it up to temp, I'm gonna run the car up in there a little bit higher so I can get under it, and uh, I'm gonna pump in whatever we got. Basically, if it's low and we pop it, uh, basically you pop it to where the uh, drain plug, whatever comes out, it starts going to a drip. Uh, then you put the, the bolt back in, and then just add a quart after that. So I always run mine over a quart. Most guys that run these transmissions run them a quart over. Just helps uh, helps the life. More fluid in there, but you're not gonna. It's not gonna be over full at that point. It's okay to do that. So we're gonna get in the car. We're gonna get the tune loaded up, and uh, I'll show you guys how to watch the temp in uh, engineering mode. And uh, we'll run it through the gears. Try to get the transmission hot. And uh, we'll go from there, see how it goes. All right, so we got the tune loaded up. Key on. Turn everything else off. Write the calibration for both TCM and ECM. All right, so we got them both complete. What we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, key off the ignition I'm going to put the laptop in the passenger seat so I can actually watch it, but then I'm going to show you how to get it into engineering mode so you can watch the uh, trans temps. All right, so we got the key off. What we're going to do is we're going to hold down this button before we key on, and it'll put it in engineering mode. We'll try to do this. 
you guys on my on my shoulder here. So key off, hold down the button. You're in engineering mode, and then obviously all my ABS starts up. Stability control, yeah, we know. So you're gonna scroll down until you hit transump temp. I start it up. Alright, so still in that, you can kind of see, you can sit here and watch it from here. Or if you have HP tuners, we're at 68 degrees, we want to get it up to 100. I'm going to try to roll through the gears real quick. Once it warms up, we're at like uh, 86 degrees right now for the car, 68 degrees, 70 degrees for the trans stem. All right, so it's at 100 degrees. We're gonna crack the uh, bolt, let it run out till it drips, and then we're gonna uh, add a cork. not running out. There's not enough in there. So we're going to fill it until it starts running out good steady stream. We're going to put the bolt back in and then we're going to add a cord. Alright, so it's just to a drip. I'm going to put the, the plug back in. Alright, so now we're just going to add the final cord. So basically, I believe it's 12 probably 12 quarts with the stock pan. I think with the Camaro pan, it's like 14 quarts total with the converter. So basically you need to have at least, you know, eight quarts. I don't know how many com how many of the converter holds, I'd imagine three to three to four, because when I added fluid, I was short. I had to go all the way up to nine quarts. And then I released the plug, and obviously probably about a half a quart, I would say, came out before it started dripping. And so I'd say eight, eight to eight and a half quarts probably where you need to be when you fill the transmission back up with the converter already full. So I'm gonna add this last one, bolts tight. All right, got that last cord in. This is your plug right here. This will actually go, once you get it in, once you get it pushed into the transmission, push this down to lock it. Same thing when you take it out, you gotta pull this up and then pry it, pry the plug out. So I'm gonna put that back in. And then just like that, it's done. So hopefully it's been some kind of help to you guys. I tried to be more informative on this one, you know. Obviously I didn't wait for the AC Delco uh, fluid. You know, I probably should have used that. You know, everybody uses that, but I did use a full synthetic uh, Dextron 6. So everybody believes different things in oils. I get it, but we put the right, the synthetic, the six in it, and if it doesn't last, it doesn't last. This tranny's already on its way out anyways. I mean, it's not uh, 100%, I should say. After you get to about 600, 600, uh, I don't know. I've been told around 600 wheel, you know, they start getting kind of crazy, and I think once you get up to eight, whatever, and then you're just playing with fire. So there's always all these cars out there that have done, you know, nine second passes or a thousand wheel or whatever but for how long you know so uh that's just my my opinion but um yeah hopefully it's helped you guys out we're gonna get this thing back on the road and uh see how it drives so hopefully that's in this video if it's not stay tuned for next time um thanks for hanging out any questions post them below in the comments if you like the video hit the like button if you dislike the video uh dislike the video you know i understand 
But uh, put down below what you didn't like or what you did like. No street video today. No street video today, not like this. But it drives good. We'll see what we can do to get you guys a street video soon. But uh, thanks for watching. I'll show you one more thing before I take off. So, this is Colin. Hello, everybody. And his YouTube channel is... The Life of Colin. And this is his fox. So, pretty badass. Well, you want to grab the light and show him the paint real quick? So, they just got it painted. They didn't think that uh, it was going to be to this uh, process, I guess, this year by far at all. But it's uh, coming together pretty awesome. Going to be some more content on this. Possibly this. A lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, like I said, this is Colin's channel. Uh, Life of Colin. Yeah, and, please subscribe. Uh, yeah, please subscribe to his channel if you can. Definitely if you like Fox Bodies. I don't know uh, too many people who don't, whether <laughs> what motor is in it or not. But this is uh, this is definitely all Ford, so it's going to be uh, pretty badass. They're going to be putting all the stuff in it uh, here shortly to finish it up. Interior pieces, all that, and it should be on the road here shortly. So definitely uh, if you like my video, hit the like button. If you dislike it, dislike it. Tell me why. And definitely go over to Colin's uh, channel and uh, subscribe to that because this car... It's going to be badass. Peace out, y'all.